Now, God loves you. He's given his son. What do you have to do? You have to do something. What is it? First, you have to repent of your sin. I have studied this book for 20 years. And according to the teaching of this book, not my own ideas, this book, there are three things that you have to do before you can be forgiven of your sin and before you can get to heaven. The first, Jesus said, except ye repent, ye shall likewise perish. Repentance, what is that? I've heard a lot about repentance. You say, what is it? All right, repentance is this. I recognize that I have broken the law of God. I recognize that I have sinned. I'm ready to acknowledge it. I'm ready to confess it. But that's not all of repentance. It means that I also must renounce my sin. I must be willing to give up my sin. Does someone need to repent of their sins in order to be saved? And Jonah chapter 3 kind of deals with this, so I want to answer this question. Repentance and salvation. Does someone need to repent of their sins to be saved? Now today, many preachers and even very well-known preachers teach that someone must repent of their sins in order to be saved. God is willing to have mercy upon you. He's willing to bestow His grace upon you. He's willing to forgive you if you're willing to repent of your sin. That phrase is used a lot. Repent of your sins, repent of your sins, repent of your sins. And because that phrase is used so commonly, repent of your sins, because it's used so often, people will assume, people will assume that anytime they see the word repent or repentance in the Bible, that it is referring to repent of your sins. In fact, many people believe that the only thing you can repent of is your sins. So you see the word repent, and they assume repent of your sins. That's repentance. Has that happened to you? Are you sure that you've repented? I tell you, if I wasn't sure that I had repented of my sins, you couldn't drag me out of Madison Square Garden tonight till I was settled. You know, and sometimes, you know, we'll, we'll talk to someone and we'll tell them, hey, salvation is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Salvation is faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, and they'll say, well, no, well, you got to repent of your sins in order to be saved. You know, and I, I've done this many times where I've told people, well, show me that. Show me in the Bible where it says that someone has to repent of their sins to be saved. And they'll take me to a verse like this. Go to Matthew chapter 4. It's not always this verse. It's often this verse, but they'll usually take me to a verse like this. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. Because someone will say, well, of course you got to repent of your sins to be saved. And I'll say, oh, show me that. Show me in the Bible where it says you have to repent of your sins to be saved. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. The first sermon Jesus ever preached was repentance. The scripture says he began to preach and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And they'll say, see? And I'll say, I, I missed it. Where does it say repent of your sins to be saved? I'll say, well, it says repent. I, say, I see repent. What I'm not seeing is where it says of your sins to be saved. I'll say, well, it's talking about your sins. When it says repent, it's talking about your sins. Because preachers say repent of your sins, repent of your sins, repent of your sins. So people get this idea. Anytime the Bible uses the word repent, it's of your sin. Jesus took your place as a substitute. Now God says, repent of your past sins, believe in him, trust in him, commit your life, surrender your soul to him, and thou shalt be saved. Here's the problem with that. Go, to jo go back to Jonah chapter 3. The problem with assuming that every time you see the word repent, it's in reference to your sin. The problem with that is that in the Bible, the person who repents more than anyone in the Bible is God, Almighty God Himself. Jonah chapter 3, verse 9. I'll give you one example. Multiple examples throughout the Bible. Jonah 3, 9. Notice what the Bible says. Who can tell if God will turn and repent? And turn away from His fierce anger that we perish not. Notice verse 10. And God saw their works that they turned from their evil way. Notice, don't miss this. And God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. Those of you that will receive Christ, those of you that will accept him, 
Those of you that will trust him. Those of you that promise to live for him from now on. You're receiving him as your Lord and Savior. You're making sure that if you died, you'd go to heaven by an act of repentance and faith. Well, every time he says repent, it means repent of your sins. Okay, did God repent of his sins? God doesn't sin. God is holy. God is without sin. So when you have this assumption that every time you see the word repent, it must be of sin, you've got a wrong assumption. Because the person who's repenting the most in the Bible is God, who doesn't sin. So there's a problem when you go to all these verses that say repent and then you add to it of your sins because not every time the Bible uses the word repent is it talking about repenting of your sin. Here's what you need to understand. The word repent means to turn. It means to rethink, to reconsider, or to change your mind. Let me prove it to you. Look at verse 9 again. Who can tell if God, notice the wording, will turn and repent and turn away? from his fierce anger that we perish not. Did you get your place there in 2 Chronicles chapter 6? Look at verse 37. 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 37. Notice what it says. Here, Solomon is talking about people repenting. 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 37 says this. Yet, if they, notice these words, notice this word. Yet, if they bethink themselves in the land whither they are carried captive. God, here's that. Once God's judgment comes and they're carried captive, if they reconsider, if they change their mind, yet if they bethink themselves in the land whither they are carried captive and turn and pray unto thee in the land of their captivity, saying, we have sinned, we have done amiss, and have dealt wickedly. What's, what, what are they doing there? They're repenting because they bethink, because they turn. See, the word repent means to turn. It means to be think, it means to reconsider, it means to think again, it means to change your mind. So look, the phrase repent of your sins, here's what's interesting. The phrase repent of your sins, because you hear all these preachers talk about repent of your sins, repent of your sins, repent of your sins. You step across that line that has been drawn in the sand by our Lord Jesus Christ, and he says repent of your sin. The interesting thing is that the phrase repent of your sins that, you can't even find that phrase in the entire Bible. You can find the word repent and repentance. You can find the word sin. But you can't find this sentence structure. Repent of your sins. You can't find that. You can't find that syntax. If you, if you pull up like a, like, like a word, like a Bible, you know, uh, software where you can search different things. I, I use the Bible software eSword. And on eSword, it will allow you to put a phrase in there. And you can, you can, you know, choose to look for the exact phrase, meaning I want to see if I can find this phrase in the Bible. You put the words, repent of your sins. You, you set it to choose to, to look for the exact phrase. You hit enter, says no verse is found. Because that phrase, repent of your sins, isn't even in the Bible. Isn't even in the, in the word of God. So here's the problem. If repent of your sins means to turn from, you know, means to turn from sins if, if you believe that in the context of salvation if someone has to repent of their sins in order to be saved the problem with that is that you're adding works to salvation there is nothing for the saving of your soul except one thing and that is the fact that christ died and rose again and you must come and repent of your sins and receive him as your lord and savior because the bible defines it at works are you there in jonah go back to jonah chapter 3 look at verse 10 Jonah chapter 3, verse 10. Don't miss this. And God saw their, notice what it says, works. And God saw their works. What did they do? That they turned from their evil way. See, these people turned from their evil way. They repented. They decided to turn away from it. And you say, what's wrong with turning from your evil way? None wrong with it. But I just want you to notice that God calls it works. And God saw their works that they turn from their evil way. And here's the thing, salvation is clearly not of works. I mean, Ephesians 29, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Titus 3, 5, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So you say, well, pastor, you know, does repentance not play a role in salvation? Go to Matthew 21. 
Matthew 21. Because, you know, when, when men like me preach these types of things, then people falsely accuse us. You know, the big false accusation in regards to this doctrine is they'll say, oh, that church doesn't believe in repentance. They don't believe in repenting. No, wait a minute. We believe in, in, in repentance. The Bible teaches about repentance. We just don't believe in adding works to salvation. And repenting of your sins is works. And God saw their works that they turn from their evil way. You say, well, then what about in regards to salvation? You know, what is repentance in regards to salvation? Well, remember, repentance means to turn, to be think, to reconsider, to change your mind. Matthew chapter 21. I'm going to give you several verses on this. Notice what it says. Matthew 21 verse 32. For John, this is Jesus speaking, for John came unto you in the way of righteousness and ye believed him not. Remember, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. In order to be saved, you have to believe. And when you believe not, that's what condemns you. That's what sends you to hell. Notice Jesus said, For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye, he's talking to the, the Jews, the Pharisees, he says, ye believe them not. He says, but the publicans and the harlots believed him. He said, you did not believe. The publicans and the harlots, they did believe. Notice, and he, when he had seen it, repented not afterward. Oh, is he talking about repenting of your sins? No. Repented not afterward? What would, if they would have repented, what would have been the product of their repentance? That he might believe him. See, this is what Jesus is teaching. He's saying, you did not believe, but if you would have repented, if you would have bethought it, if you would have reconsidered and changed your mind, you would have decided to go from not believing to believing. Why? Because what saves you? Believing. What condemns you? Not believing. He says, look, ye believe them not, but the publicans and the hearts believed them, and ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterwards that ye might believe. See, in regards to salvation, repentance is not repenting of your sin. That's works. It's repenting of unbelief. Mark chapter 1, verse 15. Go there. You're there in Matthew. Next book over is Mark. Mark chapter 1 and verse 15. Mark chapter 1 and verse 15 says this, And saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye! Notice what he says, though. And believe the gospel. Why? Because when someone repents in regards to salvation, they have to go from unbelief to belief. They have to go from the wrong belief to the right belief. Go to Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. If you're there in Mark, you're going to pass Luke, John into the book of Acts. They, look, when we walk up to a Catholic who believes that they're going to go to heaven because they go to the confessional booth, because they got baptized, because they keep the sacraments, because they do, their trust is in those religious acts. When they get saved, they have to repent and turn from what they were trusting in which was their works or their religion, and they have to now no longer believe or trust in those things and believe in Jesus Christ. That's repentance in regards to salvation. And ye repented not afterwards that ye might believe him. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Acts 19 and verse 4 says this, Then said Paul, Paul here is speaking about John's ministry, because when we, we, preach, when we talk about this repentance issue, people say, well, John preached repentance. That is why he said, unless you repent, you will perish. The Apostle Paul in his famous sermon in Athens said, God now commanded all men everywhere to repent because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world. Who should repent? Everybody. This is what the cross calls for. The heart of the message of the cross is simple. Repent or perish. Okay, well, let's see what John preached according to Paul. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance. He said, it's true that he baptized with the baptism of repentance. What was he saying, though? Saying unto the people that they should believe on him, but should come after him. That is on Christ Jesus. See, repentance in regards to salvation is you're believing the wrong thing. You're trusting Joseph Smith. You're trusting Allah. You're trusting whatever it is you're believing in. And you got to quit. You're an atheist. And you got to quit believing that and, believe, and, and now repent in your mind. Choose to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the teaching. Look, repenting of sin is works. God saw their works that they turned from their evil way. 
So we cannot add works to salvation, but you say, does repentance play a role? Repentance plays a role if you're trusting in and believing the wrong thing, then you have to turn from that belief system. You have to quit trusting that and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And let me just say this, because we're going to deal with it here in the rest of the passage. Repenting of sin does play a role in the Christian life. I'm, God wants Christians to repent of their sins. Listen to me. Not to be saved. That would be adding works to salvation. But once you're saved, God wants you to repent of your sins. God wants you to get things right in your life. God wants you to, 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 to start living right and start living like Him. But if you're doing those things to be saved, you're not even saved because you're trusting in the wrong thing. You're trusting in works. He will give you eternal life tonight. You don't have to wait till tomorrow. Tonight. That's the good news. But you must receive it. How do you receive it? First, by repenting of sin. That means to turn, to change your thinking, to change your mind, to change your attitude, and to change your way of living.